The energy collision is uh, rather straightforward. We need more energy. We are a fossil fuel based world economy, but fossil fuels uh, lead to carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere, which change the climate and potentially wreck the planet. We really are facing a perfect storm of energy and environmental challenges. One is enormous demand. We also have concerns about security uh, and how energy influences that. And third, we have oil supplies. So how we can avoid this dependence is another important issue. But of course, the overarching one that's constantly uh, in front of us is the climate change. We really need to dramatically reduce uh, our emissions of uh, carbon dioxide. So really, the, the perfect storm is uh, not how do we solve one of these problems, but how do we solve all three problems in a way that makes sense. Nuclear, the other 800-pound gorilla in the room, produces a fifth of the electricity in the U.S. Despite its issues, the climate change conundrum has brought out a huge advantage over fossil fuels. Nuclear is CO2-free, as well as having a possible advantage over some renewable energy sources. To reproduce the power that one single nuclear power plant makes, we're talking about building 10,000 windmills. Where are you going to put 10,000 windmills to replace one nuclear power station? It's very, very difficult and a technical challenge from the standpoint of not only public acceptance, but also land use. Nuclear plants simply don't emit any CO2. We, I think, in the nuclear field save over a billion tons of CO2 per year. So we're saving with nuclear a considerable amount of CO2. The more the public knows about what nuclear really is, the more they like it. And I think the challenge for the industry is getting that story told. Nuclear power, in many ways, is uh hugely safe compared to the fossil fuels. It doesn't emit greenhouse gases. Uh, the amount of uh, residue uh, that uh, has to be uh, stored afterwards is not in the billions and billions of tons, but a tiny, tiny fraction of that. In, in the United States, we have a program called the Next Generation Nuclear Plant, NGNP, which we're now in, in the process to do a preconceptual design of such a reactor. Professor Kadak is also addressing market needs by designing what he calls a Lego construction model to build a smaller and cheaper nuclear power plant. This is the simplest explanation of our, of our concept. We want to stay small. And when we started this design project, we wanted all the parts to be able to be shipped either by truck or by train to the, to the site. And what we wanted to do was essentially build the reactor out by these little truck shippable components. For example, this would be a turbine and a compressor. And everything in that space would be built in this box. Once it got to the site, we would take this thing and simply plug and play it nuclear plants because of their large capital costs, you're talking about billions of dollars to build a plant. For the nuclear plant, two-thirds, the entire project cost on a net present value basis is right up front. And no banker in a free market with a competitive electricity market is going to put up the money to do that. Not in America, not in Europe. If you can manage a plant that is a tenth of that size and makes sense uh, economically, well, that allows you to take smaller bites of the apple uh, as you potentially build up a fleet. We hope to be able to cut the construction time and improve the quality of fabrication because it's now being done in a factory. Uh, this kind of new thinking can be very important while you may lose the economy of scale of building a very, very large plant. The question is, can you make it up in an economy of manufacturing? Lots and lots of the problems in building a huge nuclear power plant will be uh, getting all the trades people together, uh, building on site. Any mistake you make is extremely costly uh, to go back. And so if you could have a, a highly trained workforce in a factory setting, manufacturing all the modules, uh, that could be uh, revolutionary. You can really plan your grid, and you don't have to make a four or five billion dollar investment. It could be a couple of hundred million dollar investment, which is very attractive to the utilities. We're looking to generate income during construction because once you build one of these in, say, three years, you can start on another module right next to it and start getting power out of that as, as this other next unit is being built. 
we now are at a point where we'd like to take this to the next stage. The next stage being, let's do some more detailed design and show this LEGO concept works. If we build this next generation nuclear plant that's scheduled to be built in Idaho, that will show to the utilities that this technology really works. The buyers of these reactors will say, whoa, this is interesting technology, it works, and it's very competitive. Let me see how many I like to buy. I think it's going to revolutionize the way we build nuclear power station. Can we actually design ourselves away from the abyss? Do we have the will, the smarts, and more importantly, the leadership? It has been said, a wise man changes his mind. A fool, never. Is now the time to not only change our minds, but change our course.